Boom! There it is, ladies and gents. I don't know about you guys. I am a fan of music. Can I make money off it? I didn't used to, but now there's a way. Let's get into it, ladies and gents. If that if, if you love music, you want to make some money off your favorite artist, this episode's for you. Here we go. Shut up and sit down. Look, a business can give you everything you want in life. Prestige, wealth, freedom. It can also take everything away from you. This show is for those who are willing to take that risk. These are the real life stories of entrepreneurs. But before we start, I have one small favor to ask. Please leave a comment. It can be advice, critiques, tips, feedback, or share this with someone because your engagement is the most valuable and most powerful form of social currency. So thank you, and welcome to another episode of Business Plus. Ooh, all right, ladies and gents, here we go. Look, life is amazing, and capturing life on film is great, but what makes it epic is the music. Music makes us feel. And until recently, artists, producers, distributors, they were the only ones making money off the music business. But now, fans have an opportunity not only to enjoy the music, but to invest in the musicians and the music as an asset class. Say what? That's exactly what today's episode is all about. So let's welcome to the show someone who's on a mission to stamp out artistic poverty from labelcoin.com, Mark Miller. Welcome to the program, Mark. How are you doing today? Hey, thank you, Hernan. I am doing awesome. That was an epic intro, I have to say. I appreciate that. Love your energy. This is super hey, fun already. I got a smile on your face, and that's what it's all about, brother. That's <laughs> what it is. All right, dude, let's let's jump into this thing, man. Uh, music, it, it like it's part of who I am. It's the emotion that I feel when it just like flows out. Sometimes if I'm in a bad mood and I want to stay in a bad mood, I'll throw on my headphones and hit a certain playlist. If I want to get in a good mood, I hit another playlist. If I want to get energy when I run, I put another playlist. Music is part of everyday life, dude, but I've never made any money on music. How did you get into this space, bro? Oh, man. I've been in the music industry almost 20 years now, which is is wild, right? Ooh. And so first as an artist, having no idea what I'm doing, just knowing this is what I'm supposed to do. I was out of college playing the, the small venue house show stuff and uh, did that for 10 years, the last five of that with my wife as an indie pop duo. And so we, we built up finally a career that was able to make sense, make a living, buy a house in Nashville. Nice. Uh, and then, uh, then we had our second child decide to get off the road and help other people uh, do what we did who are way more talented and had a much higher ceiling. So we started an artist agency uh, called Brave Enough Entertainment and did a lot of booking. We still have the agency. We've represented over 100 different artists and speakers. And, um, and it's just been, been really, really fun to see. But what was shocking to me, Hernan, is that like as an artist, right, it took us 10 years to finally make money where we broke six figures. You know, we had made $120,000, I think, our last year of in 2015 touring full time. We're like, man, we're doing it. We're like, we're able to yes. save and, and make progress. This is awesome. And then like, but when you take out our expenses that year, which was like 40 grand, that leaves us with 80. You split that between my wife and I, which is like, you know, basically 40,000 a piece working more than full time at this. Um, you know, there we are at the, in the top, you know, 2% of our, our industry, literally 10 years into our career. And we're making $40,000 a year mm. uh, a piece. And what shocked me is I started working with, uh, with all these artists off of American Idol or, or um, you know, shows like The Voice who have hundreds of thousands or even millions of followers or listeners that we were actually making more than most of them. And they had a lot of the same challenges that we did, you know, and learning like our pathway. And so it's always been on our mind, like, how do we fix this? You know, how do we help um, artists, uh, you know, who are made to do this, be able to do this as a living where they can raise a family where they don't have to work a second or third job and try to still create brilliantly at 7 p.m. at night. And yeah. uh, so, so that took us up to basically COVID 2020. Uh, you know, the music industry was, of course, rocked. We were in Nashville uh, at the time, and um, tens of thousands of people lost their jobs because uh, touring stopped. Every show was canceled. And, um, and so my co-founder of LabelCoin was actually an ex-Wall Street guy who was there during 2008, if we know much about the investment market it back then. It was bad. <laughs> it was not a pretty place. Again, lots of people losing their jobs. 
and and just the total lives is devastated. And so Chad saw that and he's he started a nonprofit basically to help uh, the people around him pick their lives back up, put them back together, and figure out how do we move forward. You know. So fast forward to um, he moves in moves to Nashville over the course of the last several years, and he's there during COVID. And he doesn't know much about the music industry except he's in Music City, and he's like, man. This looks a whole lot like the Wall Street crash of 2008. So he started another nonprofit um, to, to help musicians get back on their feet. And that's how we were introduced is someone said, hey, Mark can help you know how to help artists, you know, and help with some education and training and different aspects like that to help people come out stronger on the other side. And so we started working together in that capacity. And then he shared this idea he had with me of, hey, what if we could securitize music? What if mm. we could estimate the future earnings that an artist is going to have and bring that forward to the present and then let fans invest in that as an asset class. And I said, oh man, that's super interesting. Uh, what if we focus on songs and apply the technology that's now available to us through blockchain and Web3? And, uh, and so that's how LabelCoin was started. Dude, what an epic story, right? I mean, all right, let's let's break this down because there's a lot of aspects that have evolved over time that have changed, drastically changed the music industry. So, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I was born in the 80s, right? I was born in 82. So I grew up in an era where we had cassette tapes, we went to CDs, we went to MP3s, and, and now we're at streaming, right? So the whole spectrum of everything. And early on, if you wanted to be any kind of musician, the problem you usually had was distribution. You couldn't get your stuff out into the public until about the time of the internet and social media had made that huge change. Now, people can create content, create their song, and distribution is no longer a problem. So let's get you know something under, uh, let's understand a few things here, right? Because Web 3.0 is still one of those things where like, everybody's like, yeah, that's going to be amazing, but nobody quite really understands <laughs> what it is, right? So walk me through, I'm an artist, I want to get my stuff out there. What hurdles am I coming across now? And how does Web 3.0 change that for us? Yeah, man, great questions and great lead up. Um, so you're right, it is easier than ever to distribute music. People go through what's called a distributor <laughs> to put their songs onto Spotify, onto Apple Music. And right now, um, approximately 50,000 new songs are uploaded every single day to Spotify. Mm. That's, you know, that's like 22 million songs a year, right? So there's tons of songs. And, uh, and I can feel like, oh, man, how do I actually like, get heard? How do I actually make that, make a, a living and make a progress in this space? But, so um, you're telling me there's a chance. There's a chance, right? 50,000 songs a day, but there's a chance. There's a possibility. Mark's going to show us how. He's going to show there us how. Is. There is, because what's crazy is that like Spotify paid out, I think, $5 billion last year. Ooh. And it was like $3 billion years before that. And it just keeps increasing. Goldman Sachs actually released recently a report saying they expect music to contribute $150 billion to the GDP. And that's mostly due to streaming and catalog sales. <gasps> I forgot to tell you, man, uh, I love movie quotes. So if I can throw them in there, they're going to drop in there. But keep going, keep going. Dude, it's brilliant. It's brilliant. They're well done. I'm <laughs> impressed. Um, and so even right now, there are already 1.75 million songs on Spotify over that that have at least 200,000 spins. You know, And so why that's significant is like, yeah, that may not be a lot of money right now, like 200,000 spins, you know. Um, but when you, when you consider that Spotify makes up for about 30% of streaming revenue, and then you predict that out over 10 years and say, okay, what happens if I get a song that streams 200,000 streams a year for 10 years, you know, that can easily be $20,000 in revenue. So what would, so that, that's not going to help me a lot right now today while I'm trying to stretch my dollars as an artist, I'm trying to make my way five years down the road. I'm like, can I hold on, you know, with all these jobs off making, you know, just, just barely below minimum wage. And, um, but what happens if I could sell half of that right now, if I could sell 50% of the rights to five songs a year for $10,000 each, all of a sudden I've got a $50,000 base salary, you mm -hmm. know, just from that, um, not even talking about like my touring and what I'm able to earn there, but now I have security and I have stability 
And now what's really cool too is my fans can be engaged in a whole new way from the start. They're no longer getting begged, what we call fan handling, <laughs> you know, on digital street corners for wait, 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 wait. what's fan yeah. handling? That sounds that's a great term, right? That that sounds really that sounds I mean, you're in the music industry. When I hear fan handling, I'm starting to think groupies, dude. So you gotta clarify. <laughs> uh, you know, you know, like digital pan handling, basically. Like the things that artists have to do to survive. Or they they're like, hey, um, Hey, by the way, Hernan, um, I'm, I'm releasing a new album. If you could support me on Kickstarter, that'd be really great. Like he's there like, you, you know, go. 50 bucks, <laughs> you know, it's, it's and every, every artist has to do that. That's the only way that they can get anywhere is by counting on the, the kindness of their fans' hearts, you know, through Indiegogo or Kickstarter or Patreon. And it's exhausting. It, and, you know, it's exhausting for the people that are investing too, that are, that, that are not even investing, just giving. But for a, an artist to have to constantly beg people, fan handle, you know, for uh, to, to raise their next funds, it's tiring. I mean, I did Kickstarter, um, you know, and and it enabled us to you know work with a Grammy, you know, winning producer and all this kind of fun stuff. But man, that summer, I spent the entire summer making like sixty handmade ceramic mugs. <laughs> and- As a thank you gift, right? As a, yeah, thank you for investing in us. Thank you for hooking it up. It was awesome. Let me send you something. I don't care if they're handwritten cards or mugs or whatever it is. All right, so right. right now the fans are being generous. They're literally yeah. helping the artists get by to get started. And you really end up loving a lot of these bands. I remember um, we used to we went to go watch this uh, this band called uh, Oso Motley, right? And they and I remember it was really awesome because we went to this venue and it was small and it was real intimate. And we loved that band. We bought their CDs. We kept following them. And then we went to go see them again. It was like, whoa, this is a huge venue. Tickets are sold out. Like, you know, this is how bands end up growing because the fans help fund them. But now you're saying there's a different way that a fan can help where it's actually profitable for the fan and the artist. Exactly. And that's what's amazing because for an, an art, like a fan, if they're making a 10% return on their investment, they're thrilled, right? Like that's, that's great. Like here, I'm supporting this artist and I'm also making money. Oh, and if this artist blows up, all of a sudden I can get a much higher return. You know what happens if you would have been the one to invest in Ed Sheeran when he was doing house shows, for example, mm-hmm. you know? Uh, so it's just a, a win-win. And plus the artist doesn't have to do anything really that different from what they're already doing. Uh, cause all they're doing is we get a split with their distributor. So they say, Hey, I want to sell 50% of my digital streaming royalties of this song. Then the, we get a 50% split with the distributor. So when that money comes from Spotify, from Apple music, from those places that automatically that 50% comes to label coin and we distribute it out to all the song holders on their behalf. Uh, and so it, it's very simple, very easy for everybody keeping them protected. Um, and the artist makes 98% of what they've raised. So it's, it's a pretty sweet win-win. Oh, um, man. Plus, they get the transaction fees. Every time those notes, the song shares are resold, they continue to make money even after. So it's not even just a one time sale. So and, and this is for the people who bought into it in the first place. That, that's a continuous yeah. uh, income stream. Um, so, yeah. So the people that bought into it, they're making money from the royalties. So now when those royalties, whenever people listen on Spotify, that money that would have gone straight to the artist. Now it's going to the song holders, uh, to the mm. people that bought those digital streaming rights. So oh, see that that makes it so much better, dude. I I love music already, and if I'm listening to a song that I love, and I know every time I'm listening to it, I'm also getting paid for it. Like that even that that makes it so much better. I'd be on the hunt for people. I mean, I know some underground rappers in my neighborhood that are really good that never have any clue as to how they're going to get off the ground. They're still you know going back in the day and selling CDs out of the trunk of their car, trying to get stuff going for themselves. So how does an artist even get started or how does a fan go and get started? Yeah. I mean, right now um, we're still in development. So we've been working on it over a year. We're about six months out from release. So we expect to have our launch um, by Q1 of 2023. Um, But right now artists can actually sign up uh, and join our our beta program and they can be helping with the features that we've been developing. Uh, So they can do that at labelcoin.io slash artists. Um, or a slash get access, either one of those links will take them there. And, um, and we would love to have their input right now. And that gets them early access, be the first ones in and the marketing behind them. And then fans, um, can also just follow us on our socials right now. Uh, but when, when it goes live, all they're going to be able to, they're just going to download that label coin app from on their iPhone or their Android phones or log in on the web portal. And they'll be able to go through basically just like a, a Robin hood 
that simple of a, a stock exchange for songs where you just go, you're finding the artists that you love and you're able to use your credit card, your bank account, whatever, to be able to purchase those song shares. Dude, that is super dope. I mean, you're, 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 you're opening my eyes to a whole new opportunity here just to go in and be able to buy and have ownership shares of these particular songs. So in, in, uh, I teach a class called financial algebra. We always talk about stocks. One of the things that we, we, one of the strategies that we talk about is dollar cost averaging, right? So buying the same amount of, of shares or, or dollar amount of shares or stocks or whatever it is over a long period of time. And I'm thinking like, wouldn't it be cool to come in and do the same process to be able to invest in music? So the thing about music is it never dies. The artist may pass away at a certain point, right? But the music continues. The Michael Jacksons and the Elvis Presleys of the world are legendary and still generating revenue. Um, when when I buy these ownership interests in in the in the music industry, is this an asset that I can pass on to any of my heirs or put it in my trust or maintain it? Does it ever go away? Um, like, you know, for example, you know, the 77 years that we talk about here, does it ever go away as far as uh, royalties and licensing? Yeah, right. So I mean, you've got that that hold in perpetuity. So as long as those digital streaming royalties are owed, that then you own those royalties. And so, yes, you can pass it along just like any other asset that you have. Um, and one thing that's really cool too that I think is a, a great feature for people like you who love to find those new underground songs and things is we have what's called curated collections, which are basically song mutual funds. And so you actually get to put together a collection of songs that other people can also invest in. And what's neat is as the curator, you would earn 5% of the royalties that are generated by that fund. Wait, hold up, hold up. That's like putting together a Spotify playlist. And if people like my Spotify playlist, I make more money. I mean, that's how, that, did I hear you correctly? Is that what you're exactly. saying? Exactly, exactly, yep. So <laughs> they, they trust your taste. They say, hey, Hernan, I know you, you've got great taste in music. I'm gonna, instead of putting my hundred bucks into these two songs, I'm gonna put my hundred bucks into these hundred songs in your fund and trust that oh it's going to dude better. now you're giving djs a whole new a whole new way to make some money i mean imagine uh okay so so not only can i invest in the song itself i can invest in a group of songs and this is going to live in perpetuity which means cash flow so how how often are you looking to distribute funds is this a quarterly thing mm -hmm. annually thing how often do you get uh checks from from your rising stars <laughs> Yeah, so uh, we do pretty much a pass through. So when the money comes in, the money goes out and we use smart contracts in order to handle all the payments. People are able to see the full breakdown of like where these streams came from, you know, how much pay was received from YouTube, from Spotify, et cetera. You know, so they can see it uh, transparently. This is what I was owed. This is where it came from. And, uh, and that happens pretty much uh, immediately uh, or, or very, very quickly for the point where we receive those funds. And so that, that varies based on from distributor to distributor, um, whether that's quarterly or monthly or different aspects, but um, we, we want to get it paid out as fast as anybody. So what about, um, you know, a lot of uh, Web 3.0 stuff has mm -hmm. the whole uh, coin bit to it, right? And so there's always that question of, can I turn mm -hmm. my coin into dollars or is it just going to live as a coin on this platform? And how can I use that currency? Uh, can you explain how that works? Yeah, totally. Well, I think one of the most important things about the way that we're doing this is every single song is actually a registered security with the SEC. Ooh. And so we do that through a broker dealer uh, with Reg A Plus, which is a regulation that passed back in 2012. Uh, and uh, really, really amazing stuff that lets us basically, in nerd speak, do fractionalized securities to, uh, to um, it's going not, not unregistered you know, but like to unaccredited investors, there's a word yes. I'm looking for. So, so basically the normal people like, like us that make less than a quarter million dollars a year or don't have $2 million, you know, in, in net assets, in liquid assets are able to, are able to invest in, in these opportunities legally and protected. And so, um, so that's a really important factor starting out. Um, but then coming into uh, us, Shoot, I just lost the other part of that. Where did we start from? About the coin, <laughs> coin to dollar yeah, usage. Coin. Yeah, thank you. So uh, we're paying out those royalties. Um, people can collect it just in their fiat currency, wherever, whatever country they're in. Um, we're not trying to be cute by using a token in order to get around security law, you know, um, and say this is a utility um, because the SEC has shown that they're happy to go back five years and, <laughs> and audit the make, crap out of your stuff, yeah, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. So, so uh, you know, we're talking about, you know, people's, 
lifelong earnings and uh, and their long term holdings. And so we we know that we have to do it right from the beginning and be above board and everything. So um, so the only part where the the token actually comes in is actually as a reward system inside. So we're building everything on the blockchain. So everything's you know transparently held there. We have our own wallet within the app, but people are are able to withdraw their funds in their fiat currency. Um, but they're able to pay with crypto if they want to or, or different aspects. But then the the, to the reward token is the label coin. And so that is just earned um, by discovering new songs and ranking them. It's earned by different things that you do within the app. Um, and then you're able to spend that in a reward center where you can actually buy some of the, the notes or merch or different items that are there. So is is label coin going to be like when I download the app, I can obviously mm -hmm. buy and sell the different things that I'm doing within the app. What about as a player itself, right? Is, mm. is this going to be something where people can not only interact on the currency level, on the coin level, but as well as discover and play their music? Like if I'm already creating a playlist and I have all the artists that I like and I have all the music that, I, that I've that i purchased, I'm not sure I'm going to want to go to Spotify and listen to everything else. I think I'm going to want to stay at least to play with my list in my, my platform, right? Mm. I mean, we would love to get future integrations into those DSPs, you know, for sure. But we don't want to be a, a player in the sense of, because we don't want to cannibalize the earnings, right? Because that's mm -hmm. where the money comes from. Very true. Uh, and, and so, uh, but you'll be able to do like 30 second previews, uh, basically through the Spotify API or the different APIs from different DSPs. Um, but then there is that song discovery mode that you can swipe into. But um, in that one, you get to hear the full song, but you don't know what song it is. You, you don't see the album art. You don't see the name of the artist. You know, all you see is basically the, the lyrics and some rankings through like emoticons and some different things. So you're able to say basically, how does the song make you feel? How great is this song? What makes it awesome? And just really quick rankings. And then once you rank it, then you see the song. You can buy it or follow that artist um, and then go to the next song. So that's the only the, like true listening experience that we have within the app is meant to discover new songs and to give us really good data on, hey, is this song good or not? But that feeds into our song valuation formula. So nice. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, what about um, so? For example, if I wanted to, well, I mean, I think you kind of answered that one. But let's let's say, for example, that you, we wanted to get to the point where I wanted to share this particular platform. I wanted to show mm -hmm. a an artist. Look, this is Label Coin. Is there a way for me to get something like an affiliate link or a way to to market? In other words, how are you getting? artists to come to the label to label coin and is there a way for us to benefit from bringing artists to label coin yeah no great question we don't have any kind of affiliate system set up right now um though we'd be open to pursuing something like that like with, with people that are there uh we do have people that have been helping us just spreading out the word because they're like hey this kind of put up your social currency, this is really going to help you. You should check it out, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And then that person likes you more, trusts you more. Um, we're definitely trying to stretch our startup dollars for sure, right? Because, you know, building is, is expensive. But um, but when you once you are live, we are looking at ways that we can do that legally. What can we do? And um, also with limitations with securities law, too, to make sure we're above board and try to figure out how people can be rewarded for those types of things. Um, but... When you do, like for example, um, when you're getting in now, what's happening is we're putting marketing dollars behind people, mm. and so like that's that's our whole marketing strategy is to make your song successful, uh, because we know that if your songs are successful, then we'll be successful. Yep. And so yep. so that's the the face, and so it's very much kind of like, hey, this is a community we're trying to build where we're we're all helping, each, we're looking out for each other's interests. Um, and it's just a fun space to be where it's not everybody, you don't always feel like you have to look out for just yourself, but you're like, Hey, if we're looking out for each other, then everybody gets watered. Right. In that sense. Um, yeah. and that's what we're trying to create is just that, that platform that looks after the best interests of everybody. And, and how do we help everybody elevate as much as possible? Cause I think we, it's, it's something you can easily understand, right? Like when, when we talk about stocks in class, it's like uh, ownership of a company. I don't know. I, I don't even know that company. I don't even buy that product. I don't drive that car. Right? Like there's, there's a, a weirdness when you get into the stock game, but I feel like with music, you're, you're, you're literally investing and generating revenue from something that you love anyways. Right. I, I just don't know how you're going to, 
hold the floodgates back from getting people to come on board for this thing? Like what, what a response. I mean, obviously you're on this podcast. I'm sure you've been on other podcasts. What's been your response when you talk to people and present this idea, this concept to them? Oh man, overwhelmingly positive everywhere. You know, it's just, um, it just it kind of makes sense, honestly. <laughs> uh, and, and exactly to your point, it's like, you know, if I invested in Apple, what can I actually do to help my Apple stock go up? Not really much, right? But when you're investing in music, like you can spread the word about an artist, you know, and actually help that stock go up because the more things are getting streamed, the more valuable that song is. And it's, it's, it's kind of interesting in that fact that it's not only something that you care about and love, but it's something that you can actually impact. Yeah, it, 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 I'm telling you, shares, share, 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 share. Or what about, uh, do you have access to being able to use the music in, let's say, for example, a podcast intro or on your TikToks or whatever it is? Is, is there limitations, uh, copyright infringements that we have to worry about? Or is purchasing that particular share mm-hmm. allow you for distribution as well? Yeah, there's a lot of different rights in the music world um, and the ways that it's broken down. And so you would not, you're not buying the the ability to use that song to where you're owning the um, the rights to where yeah, now I can use this in my own shows or in my own movies. That's um, that's a sync license and separate, and uh, and that has to go through the the proper entities. Now we're we're also working on making those sync royalties uh, also investable. So right now we're starting out with the digital streaming royalties, but the other royalties that are there like involve like mechanical royalties and, you know, and like your composition and those rights for when it's being streamed, when it's being played with whoever wrote the song versus who recorded the song, you know, there's, there's other avenues there. Um, so that's a great question, but you would still have to like, you, you don't actually get to use that song however you want to, um, but you are earning whenever it's played. Perfect. Perfect. All right, Mark. Well, let's, let's uh, get into the nitty gritties, man. Uh, I'm sure there are artists out there. There are people who are like, dude, I got beats. I got flows. I got all kinds of stuff ready to go. How do I get started, man? How do people get a hold of you? How do they get started? Yeah, right on. Go to, to labelcoin.io. Uh, so right there, you'll be able to sign up as an artist. Um, and you can follow us yeah, on Instagram or on TikTok, those different places. We'll be continuing to release more content. Um, we're about to have our first prototype dropping to the, the artists who have pre-signed up who are in our beta program too, for feedback. So if you jump in quick, you might be able to get some some early peaks as well. So that'd be great. Sweet, man. All right, so if if an artist is getting started, do they have to have the track already laid out? Is it something that Mm. has to be a finished product? Can they come in with pieces of it? Maybe just the vocals or maybe just the the beats or the instruments? Um, Is there a way to merge people? Like who are you looking for when it comes to the Mm. artists that come to this app? That's a great question. We are looking at things like in that stage in the future, but right now it's for finished tracks. It's things that are, are produced and ready to, to go live. Um, they really have to be completed before they can we can sell those rights. Good question. Good to know. Good to know, man. All right, dude. Well, check it out. Ladies and gents, look, music is your thing. I know it is. I teach 17-year-old high school students, and they walk around all day long with those earbuds in their ears. I know they're listening to all kinds of cool stuff. So if you're interested in turning that music that you absolutely love into a cash-flowing asset, and you guys got to definitely check it out, labelcoin.io, labelcoin.io. Make sure you guys follow them on social as well, at labelcoin, because, dude, this is going to be revolutionary. I, I can feel it in my bones. Like, this is going to be the next thing for the music artist. There's no reason why an artist wouldn't want to get most of the money up front, and there's no reason why fans wouldn't want to benefit, not just shining their lights at the concert, but actually generating some revenue from your favorite artist. So make sure you guys check it out, labelcoin.io, labelcoin.io. Mark, one more thing, man. You've been on a number of different podcasts. You're on the Business Bros podcast. We love video testimonials. What was your experience like on the Business Bros? Oh, man, this is one of the most fun podcasts I've been on. Uh, and I have been on a lot, uh, but you've done it super, super well. It's so fun. I love the energy. And um, I'm excited to start digging more into to the back the back videos. Yeah, so, it, keep dude. going, man. You guys, you're crushing it. Thank you, my brother. Thank you. And I want to make sure you got any last minute thoughts, anything you want to get out to the audience before we, before we end for today. Man, you know, uh, set your own success, right? It's, it's like, what is, don't compare yourself to other artists or other people. You know, it's like, what is right for you? 
uh, and the balance of your life and then just do your best and show up to work every day and you'll be surprised how far you go. So. Dude, one of my favorite artists of all time is Eminem. And I love the story where uh, he, he talks about how, well, Akon talks about how he went to go work with Eminem and he shows up to the studio like seven, eight o'clock at night, ready to do his thing. And M's not even there. He's like, what's going on? And he realized that Eminem treats his music business like a business. He is there at nine o'clock. He leaves at five o'clock and that's it. That's the time that he puts into work. I'm sure like any other entrepreneur, he can't stop thinking about it, but he, he starts at nine and ends at five. Ladies and gents, there are artists out there that are ready to take on this industry like a business and you can invest in them. Labelcoin.io. Make sure you guys check it out. I know I will. I'm going to be downloading that app as soon as it's ready. Mark, thank you very much for being on the Love show. It. Ladies and gents, make sure you guys go to labelcoin.io. And if you guys need help starting a podcast or with your social media stuff, businessbros.biz. We'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace. And we're out. It's over. Go home. Is your business in need of marketing? Try starting a podcast. But not just any podcast. Podcast like a pro. We can show you how to take your business from being invisible to becoming a brand people trust. Go to www.businessbros.biz to get